Bradford is one of those cities. You hear about it a lot. It used to be one of the most violent cities in the UK. It's also a very divided city. There is a heavy Muslim population and a heavy British, white British population that keeps themselves to themselves. I'm here in Bradford to find out firsthand on the ground what it's like living in Bradford, just how isolated it is for some people living in Bradford and what the real problems are here amongst the community that is so very diverse and yet not truly multicultural because they keep themselves to themselves. Bradford has one of the highest Muslim populations in the country. I came here to see what they thought of Boris Johnson's comments about the face veil, that it makes women look ridiculous or like a post box or bank robber. Some people said he should be kicked out of the Conservative Party. What do you think to that? I think he should. I should because it's racist, direct discrimination. That's a lady there, yeah. And she looks perfectly as I would expect a lady to look. A very honoured respectful lady of a household yes, you know, exactly she's not, a, she's not a youngster that's going to reveal herself and show herself off to catch his eye she's more tame in her own little world now and she's looking after her own household her own sort of family and she's happy that way you think it's a strong a sign strong, of strength strong and strength yeah but most people in bradford didn't want to talk about the words of some politician in london they have far more pressing concerns more real worries much closer to home and so that was one of the things i was going to mention um was, was the grooming um, as i say it's the more obvious things that you see which is the intimidation factors the being sworn at white this white that um, clearly looked down upon, um, which, you know, sticks and stones, shrug your shoulders. White. Yeah, white piece of shit, white trash, white, you know, wh white, um, whatever, white bastard, white motherfucker, excuse my language, but, no, no, no. you know, it's where you, it, you get killed in the street. There's certain areas, as I say, if you, if you drive along there, um, where I used to live with their mother, I was told when I moved to that area, you do not go to Lorcombe, you do not go to, um, there's a park called Devon Park up in Keithley. You do not, under any circumstance, get, go to that you area. Told that. Yeah. Now I, I. So I was told by uh, my ex-wife, you don't go there. I, I laughed at it, shrugged my shoulders. I'm from the big city. I'm from, you know, from Leeds. So, um, you know, I wasn't too bothered where I grew up. It was not like that at mm. all. But what do you but, tell your girls? Um, that there's issues around that area. That there's a certain group. Um, be careful of being approached. Um, stay clear, stay away, um, be quiet, head down, walk on. There's a real problem here with majority Pakistani Muslim rape squads grooming girls across the city. They have the fast cars, use drugs as bait and traffic girls across the country for sex. On August 15th, detectives here at West Yorkshire Police charged 31 individuals with offences related to the trafficking of children and the rape of children. There are a further 12 individuals who cannot be named for legal reasons. And the list of the things they've been charged with, charged with two counts of a rape of a girl aged 13 to 15, charged with the attempted rape of a girl aged 13 to 15, charged with five counts of rape of a girl aged 13 to 15, and these are the things parents in Bradford have been talking to me about. One father, Simon, even moved his daughters away from a school in Bradford because he could see the young girls being picked off at the gate. To be quite honest, the area that their mother lives in, I refuse to let them go to high school in that area because it's grooming is a serious issue. So I ended up with another property um, in a, a, another area. I've gone to that extreme. And this is a city that is clearly divided by colour and religion. As you drive about, the division is stark and saddening in equal measures. Most people live exclusively amongst their own kind, in ghettos of sorts, creating no-go zones for outsiders where the police also steer clear. Hilary has lived in the city all her life. Her own son was groomed by the gangs to work for them and, as we spoke, it was clear she lost her faith in this place a long time ago. And I don't think I have to want people to dare to speak up. Yes. They, they, they have to go along with it. Yes, exactly. It's almost like it's become... I don't know, it's almost as if, having spoken to a number of people, Hilary, it's almost as if people have become more militant in in how yes. they expect their their people to be or their women to be certainly there seems to be a, a 
a, a very moderate group of Muslims that live in Bradford and want to live happily just like you do, just like other families do that I've met. And then there's a much hard, more hardcore, extreme bunch that seem to be very demanding and, and want to be very harsh about the way that they're living as Muslims in Bradford. You know, I mean, I've worked with, with, with Asians that... Of, of, you know, that openly said they hate Britain, you know, to, they hate our values, you know, we will succumb to, uh, I, I mean, I had a, I worked with a, 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 a senior social worker, she was a, an African Muslim, and she said that, you know, Islam will take over. And the more people heard I was in the city and I tweeted that I was there, the more people wanted to talk. The BBC demanded to know exactly what I thought I was doing, speaking to their people in their town. Let's talk about the good stuff, the bad stuff, and let's get some real truths of the people back in the media. You do not hear anymore, you don't get reporting out and about around the country, the good places I live as well, a place called the rest of the UK. We just don't see enough people. So I'm here uh, later on today, I should be having lunch with a lady in her cafe. It's run by a Muslim lady who owns the cafe, successful businesswoman in Bradford, hearing her story. I've just been to Leeds to speak to a father who's had to move his children from the school because of the grooming gangs, plucking off girls outside the school gates. And sometimes with the BBC and others, you're not prepared to talk about certain topics. And that's why I think someone like me is needed in these places to help talk about the stuff other people are afraid to say. In truth, I found Bradford to be a city with a big heart and I love the young, fun energy about the place. Lovely Tazim Sawaz got in touch with me. She's a proud businesswoman and mother, originally from Pakistan. She's recently opened a new cafe in a local church, creating honest Pakistani food that tastes just like home. She invited me to share time with her at her business, run by women and putting females first. So when we got your Just Eat order in that we had, yeah. then you, was that your son that came and picked yes. up and delivered it? Yeah. So they really are supportive, yes, aren't they? Yes, yes, yes. That's so nice. Absolutely. I love that. So you can see we're busy I'm trying to run our really business. Really good. Uh, trying to make an honest living. When do uh, you um, have a holiday? I don't. At the moment, I've been doing this seven days a week because it's new. So I'm trying to build my business up so I'm prepared to sacrifice my time to see the, the reaps, reaps of my rewards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But away from the happy stories of positivity and success, there is a dark truth in this city. The number one problem, prioritised by all the people I met and spent time with, is drugs. So it's a weird idea, isn't it? Sort of West Yorkshire, this place known for its kind of old farming communities, yeah. its industry, industry its yeah. mills, its whatever. Mm -hmm. That The number one industry now in Bradford is drugs. 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 There's a serious, serious drug problem in Bradford and that reflects on people who are staying at these types of accommodation. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's probably 20, 30 places in Bradford that provide temporary housing. Yeah. And the, the heroin um, problem is, is major. We found, I major. guess you, you found some law coated in needles really, didn't I you? went to, Phone. I went to um, I went to a room about four week ago. You got a picture and of I it. Bet there was I think that might have somewhere. I'll try and find it. We'll try print. and see if uh, we can get um, it together. There was uh, around two hundred needles in there on the floor of your room. One, one, one girl. Your your not your room. In one of the rooms. One of the rooms that you are responsible and own. Yeah. Two hundred needles. Yeah. And it's happened several times with different uh, different people. If you hang around, say, a um, car wash, for example, and I, I don't mean the hand wash, I mean, you know, you will see, these, the cars are always pristine, all these hire cars, because they go through that many bloody car washes, because they meet people, they jump in the car, and then go through the car wash, and then remarkably, this guy gets out and, and off the trot, so a deal's been done. So the deal's done in the car wash? Yeah, it's just done kind of passing, uh, you know, whatever whilst nobody can see. I'm an addict myself so I understand that culture. Mine's been an addiction for like 36 years. You've got you've got shops around Bradford that sell drugs to kids and you know what I mean so it is everywhere at the moment it's rife down in Bradford. I think kids should do it because all my mates at school they do it for a bit of fun, a joke and a laugh to impress other kids and that they shouldn't do it because it can affect them later on in life. So like my mate she, she does it for fun just to show off that she I am mighty 
What well, and just in terms of drugs that are maybe available, I'm not trying to do specifics about your friends or anything, but the sorts of drugs that your friends or, or people you know might be taking. What sort of drugs do they have? My mate at school, she smoked like a bit of heroin. And that how how old are we? And I'm not don't mention any names, but how old are we talking about that takes heroin? At 14, 15 years old. You know, there's no one picture to paint of Bradford. It's a complicated place, made up of the truths of half a million people trying to go about their lives. But I can't help feeling that in the battle between good and evil here in Bradford, it's the dark forces of drugs that have got the upper hand. I came here to Bradford to talk to people about Boris Johnson's comments about the face veil. I wanted to know what Muslim women think. But, you know, the people of Bradford don't want to talk about that. What some MP says in London doesn't really matter. They've got much more pressing issues. What the people here in Bradford are worried about are grooming gangs picking off their daughters from the school gates. They're worried about places that they can't go and the police simply refuse to operate in. And they're worried about the number one industry in this former mill town, the problem of drugs.